Hi there. It's almost midnight and I just finished my newest video about the uh, artist Edward Gorey. It starts out with a different person's house, James Thurber, but just stick with it and uh, enjoy it. Okay, thanks. Bye. The writer James Thurber was from Columbus, Ohio, the same town where I lived for a time. His old house has become a center for arts and culture, and once hosted an exhibition and related programming for Edward Gorey, an erudite, madcap, Victorian surrealist writer and illustrator. I don't mean that he lived during Victorian times, I mean he had a Victorian sensibility. I had been a big fan of his since high school, and I was excited to see the show and even more excited to find some signed etchings for sale. I have treasured this little print for nearly 30 years. Perhaps you are familiar with the dark wit of nursery rhymes such as the Gashly Crumb Tinies, 26 vignettes, one for each letter of the alphabet, describing the untimely demise of a small child. A is for Amy, who fell down the stairs. B is for Basil, assaulted by bears all the way along to Y is for Yorick, whose head was knocked in, and Z is for Zilla, who drank too much gin. Well, not for everyone, maybe. Each of these stories came out in its own little hardcover book until they were anthologized in bigger compendiums like Amphigori, Amphigori 2, that's T-O-O, -O, and Amphigori also. Get it? Back to my etching, a quintessential gory image that eludes interpretation the way this woman is eluding whatever she is eluding by hiding beneath this elephant, which, by the way, has claws, because how else would it grasp the spheres on which it balances? I have titled it temporarily for the pandemic, Sheltering in Place. Gory made 65 such standalone prints, that were not excerpted from other stories. Turns out the one I have is from a small suite of six etchings, some with Aquatint, that were published in Zurich in the 1970s. Here's another one on the theme of hapless people dwarfed by menacing yet slightly goofy animals. In this one, an insect behaves like a person. By now, the surreal streak running through much of Gory's work should be evident. These are all pretty small prints, usually about five inches on the longest side. I'm relieved to read the title of this print and find out the creature is friendly. I am perhaps encouraged to interpret images of large, dark, and or mysterious beasts beside diminished humans metaphorically because I learned that Gory was deeply well-read in all types of literature and also has a background in theater arts. Oh, and here is my favorite, not least because of the surreal erudite wit of the title. The term malocclusion refers to a deformation or a misalignment of the teeth, which this cliff resembles. Instead of a bit of food, a teddy bear has become lodged in a crevice. The specks of what look almost like snow are not drawn individually, but inherent to the aquatint process, of which I speak in more depth in my video on Francisco Goya. In case you are not yet convinced of Edward Gorey's cleverness, I present an image of a hand-decorated envelope he sent to a collaborator and friend. An exhibition including such ephemera was held in Chicago several years ago and impressed me deeply, so I wanted to include an example in this video. It's actually a bit more colorful than his published work, often rendered in the deceptively simple monochrome of pen and ink. He told many stories in his life and is responsible for untold thousands of mouths turning upward into a smile. Edward Gorey, the cat lover with the erudite, mad cat, Victorian, surrealist sense of humor, the world is a much more ordinary place without you. Please keep checking 
the NIU Art Museum Facebook page or the NIU CVPA Arts Blog for more Art From Home videos.